Well, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Welcome to Lexington, where it's beginning to look a lot like tip off and what a time to be alive. College basketball returns everybody in great spirits, including Oscar Chibwe, Lance Ware, and the Yale Bulldogs are in town here in Lexington for the first time since 1961. Bulldogs off to their best start since 1945 and even Santa Claus is here to witness the action. So glad you could join us with Mark Wise, I'm Roy Philpop. Kentucky's won three straight, playing some good ball right now, fresh from their trip over to London, and uh, we'll see what happens here today. Well, the first decision for any opposing coach when you have to address the Kentucky talent is what are you going to do about the big fella, Oscar Shibwe? Are you going to have to double team him? Are you going to have to go on the bounce? Or you're going to let him uh, get his and worry about everybody else. The reason why this is such a problem, Sheepway's offensive repertoire is much improved. And by the way, good luck in keeping him on the offensive glass. He leads the planet in rebounding. And then you have to contend with one of the better freshmen in the country, Kaysen Wallace, a great combo guard skill set with positional strength and length. I really like his mature approach with his production, and he was marvelous in the Michigan game. Coach Cowie told us this morning, yeah, there's no jet lag. We had a couple of days to rest up, getting set for exams next week before the trip to New York City to battle UCLA. James Jones, three-time Ivy League Coach of the Year for the Bulldogs. We mentioned their great start, 8-2, and two, that 8-1 and one beginning, best since the mid-1940s. They've been dancing recently, and this should be a good challenge for Kentucky and a good crowd on hand as well. The opening tap trolled by the Cats. Reeves leading scorer. The floater is all net. The transfer from Illinois State connects. Well, that's a great sign for Cat fans because he is a dynamite three-point three shooter. And if he adds in a little mid-range game, watch out. Starting five for Yale. This is their third different starting lineup this year. They are without the services of Matt Noling, their leading scorer, who's out this afternoon due to a bicep injury. Officially listed as day-to-day -day moving forward, but that's a big loss for the team from the Ivy. Yeah, talking about his production of James Jones, he, he's had such a leap in production, talking about knowing because last year he averaged just seven points a game. E.J. Jarvis, first points for the Bulldogs. So we mentioned you get a week layoff after this game. Your last game was in London against Michigan back on Sunday. You wonder if Russ, jet lag, any of those factors are an issue as you take a look at Kentucky's starting five. I don't think so, Roy, and the reason why I say that is because Cal was really specific yesterday about some things that he wanted to work on, and they just haven't had a lot of practice time. Now, Yale has forgotten to come down. you got to inbound the ball here. Shibwe on the tip in off the Wheeler miss. So here's the game within the game. The, Yale's going to use Kelly at the high post. 35 in blue. That brings Shibwe. He has to be a defender out on the perimeter. Lakitas connects, tied at four. Open look for Jacob Toppin. How'd you feel about the blue Santa Claus right as we came oh, on? Love here? it. Love it. I'm missing my Holly already today. In terms of my music, there's Shibwe having to guard on the perimeter, and he's going to have to do that a lot today. They'll run, and I'm talking about Yale. They will run a lot of backdoor dribble handoffs, or as coaches like to refer to them as DHOs, to get certain kind of action on one side of the floor. I like how you peeled the curtain back on the coaching lingo there for us. Yale basketball in a tie game just underway in Lexington. Mbang sends it outside. Plakitas no. Bulldogs get it back with a fresh 20. Last game for Yale, loss against Butler back at Hinkle on Tuesday. It's a 10 point set back in. Bang the floater, no, with the left hand. Shibwe to the rebound. One of the concerns Cal talked to me about after the Bellarmine game was they felt like time of possession came into play as you see Wallace attack and get to the rim. And what did, what did he mean by that? 
that Bellerman had the ball so much of the time, it's almost a football reference. Here's Wallace getting feet in the paint. He just has such a mature way about him for a freshman. Over four and a half assists per game. Field goal percentage over 50%. It's just six of 12 at the strike. No seven of 13. You figure that's probably going to come around for Coach Cal. Well, the whole team needs to do a better job with their free throw shooting because so far on the young year, it's just 68%. And if you count the power five games that they played in, it dips down to 63. Is it still a young year? Like, when do you yes. turn the page towards, okay, we're now midseason? Not until conference play. Sure. Because by then, you better be ready to go. Why did so, you look at me when you said that? You're talking about the <laughs> broadcasters, too. I'm ready. Polakitas. Mismatch. Yep. Feed Jarvis inside, working against Shebley. Patient finish, and we're tied at six. Jarvis has four. What great footwork that time by Jarvis, coming off that game against Butler, where he went for 14 and six. Open look for Wallace, and Kaysen Wallace from downtown has five. Such a great combination of skills. He can run the point. He can also be your two guard. Bulldogs Ivy League champions a year ago. Beat Baylor in the NCAA tournament not too long ago. Arguably in the midst of their best stretch in school history. Jarvis bottled up, one to shoot. And a shot clock violation. Todd Austin, Owen Short, Lucas Santos, our veteran officiating crew today. That will please Cal from this perspective. We often talk about offensive patience. There's also such a thing as defensive patience, and Kentucky will have to be really patient late in clock situations today. All right, so I know what offensive patience is. What is defensive patience? Don't break down the last five seconds of a shot clock possession. Shibway off the mark, just inside the arc. Nine to six game, rejected by Shibway out of bounds. It'll stay on this end. Take another look. Rim protection. That's an easy one. You didn't have to work very hard for that one. Standing out of bounds and a turnover. Mbang was right on the end line. Yale's gotten off to a pretty good start. Why the senior EJ Jarvis with marvelous footwork. The double pivot, if you will. And on the other end for the Cats. Oh, yeah, it's that freshman, Casey Wallace, with the corner three ball. Up across the pond, Coach Cal and company visiting London, touring Chelsea to battle Michigan last Sunday afternoon, a 73-69 dub. And a great time was had by all. We mentioned no jet lag or anything of the sort. The first ever college basketball game inside O2 Arena. You get the win, and obviously everybody feels better, but certainly ambassadors of the sport they enjoyed their time he got the victory and uh, life is good some six days later right let me tell you why cal was thrilled about that performance plus 13 in rebound margin plus six in second chance points when you that doesn't seem like a lot but when you're in a four point game that stuff matters i'm a little disappointed we don't have any ted lasso <laughs> Some what? AFC hey. Richmond stuff. Come on. When are they coming out with season two Not of Ted Lasso? Enough. What are we doing? It's season three, by the way. Thank you. I see. It's been so long, I forgot. <laughs> I have to go back and watch the first two seasons to figure it out. A little three-quarter press by the Bulldogs. Without their leading score, Kentucky able to manage. Wallace attacking. And a skip pass. Reeves hands it off to Wallace for three, and he's got eight. Well, that looks so quiet, his release. Kentucky, an SEC best, 39% as a team from distance to start this season. Inbang hit the deck. Yale fortunate not to turn it over. A 12-6 game. Shot clock down to six. Pulakitas. And a foul call. 
Wallace four for four against Michigan. Here he is. Watch. He's the one who gets speed in the paint and then drifts to the same side corner. Nice extra pass by Reese. Wallace delivers again with another three ball. So I like the decision by Reeves not to force it, give it up to a better shot. There was a foul called on the screen. I thought it was an offensive foul. It was. It? Isaiah Kelly picked up the personal, but he was the one that also absorbed the brunt of the punishment, was grabbing his face, walking back to the huddle to talk to his head coach, James Jones. Yeah, they had called an offensive screen on Kelly, but then they're looking at the action that happened after that. Well, he appears to be okay, was inserted into the starting lineup, replacing leading scorer Matt Noling. And Owen Short, Todd Austin looking at this sequence as we speak. Reeves and Kelly just collided awkwardly near the bottom of your screen there. Well, I'm not sure how that's an offensive foul. Well, he does move in late. I think Reeves was just bracing himself. It'll just be a common foul. Just hard basketball contact. Five minutes in. Cats lead it by six. Big day of basketball in the SEC. When I say big, underline that word about four times. Some juicy, juicy games today. Top 10 showdown between Alabama and Houston. Have Ole Miss and Valpo coming up as soon as we're done here in Lexington. Shibwe, no, he'll get it back. How about the ball movement? Reeves wide open for three. Smart play by Shibwe out of traffic. Reeves with five, Wallace with eight. And a foul inside against the Cats. First personal on Kaysen Wallace. Shibwe inside, gets his own miss. Watch as he looks around, wanted to finish, but then kicks it out. The extra pass leads to another three-point attempt and make for the Cats. Uh, Antonio Reeves, his three-point shooting has been sensational. Even going back to his days at Illinois State, Made it a point to work on his shot all off season, launching between 500 and 1,000 three pointers per day. He's paid dividends his first couple of games in Lexington. Shibway nearly had a steal and was yes. off and running. Yes, he did. Well, this place would come unglued. And an offensive foul again against Yale. Masaaba, the guilty party. Yeah, this is a hard screening team. They're a hard cutting team. Consequently, they're hard to guard because of it. See, I, I, again, that's just incidental. Play on. Nine nothing run for Kentucky in the last two and a half plus minutes. I mean, there's good games in the league across the ESPN networks. Wheeler, no. Shibwe is fourth rebound. Ripped away by Collins. He'll secure it. Shot clock at seven. Here's C.J. Frederick, his first touch. Shot clock, got to hurry. Frederick. And they'll call that a shot clock violation, no bucket. But they'll also go look at it because it's close. Keep, keep your eye on the top part of the screen. Yeah, that's not going to count. That's a good call. Won't take long to make this play. But you see the struggle for Yale and most teams when they come in here to play the length and strength of Kentucky. You've got to keep them off the glass. Even Cal didn't want to argue that. You notice that? Every coach wants to argue this time of the year, but he was like, okay, we went and looked. James Jones here, number 24, coaching the Bulldogs. A wry smile after that replay review. 
had an interesting question when I asked him, or an answer, when I asked him about if he were to advise himself in his first year at Yale, and he was pretty quick and adamant, wasn't he? He said, calm down. He used another word in between yes, the calm did. and the down, but we can't say what that word was. There's a deep three for August Mahoney. Yeah, the ultimate catch and shoot guy. 41 of his 54 shots are from bonus land. Made three Tuesday night at Butler in historic Hinkle. Around by Collins. Get it back to Frederick. Yeah, I didn't like that lob. That's a, that's a lob that will work in this game. That will not work in league play. Livingston back inside to Shebway. Too easy. Oscar down with four. Man, when he gets you on his hip, it is lights out. Jack Malloy on the floor for the first time. Mahoney just hit the three. And a step back. In and out and back in. Malloy is a big guy, comes off the bench, but not afraid to shoot from outside. It's that Alabama-Houston game we were telling about on uh, ABC. Wheeler with the bucket. Wheeling and dealing under the rim. Wheeler is one of those guys that's so quick. He's left-handed. You know he's going left. I know he's going left, and he still gets left. Hey, he just scored his 1,000th point two over in London on a three-pointer, no less. Celebrated that achievement pregame here in Lexington. Collins a rebound. Wheeler survey. Nearly traveled a whistle inside and a foul call against Yale. Cats have gotten off to a pretty good start here at home. We, I like the fact that Wheeler was under control in terms of coming up in transition, evaluating. Frederick will trigger. Livingston was open on the cut briefly. Good start for Wallace. Livingston operating down low off glass. And kind of smash mouth hoops there. Forced the issue, but it pays off. Cats have won three straight, looking for victory number four. For exams this coming week, then the trip to MSG and UCLA next weekend. Backdoor cut was there, so's the three. In bang, no. Now that's the action Kentucky worked on yesterday. Lakitas way off the mark ahead is Livingston. Off glass too easy, 23 to 11. Kentucky got away with a breakdown defensively. And then leaking out Livingston, who's kind of searching for his role on this team. But I mean, that's what the months of November and December are all about, right? Malloy launching back iron. And yes, so no. And the tip in, yes. Jarvis working hard inside. Yeah, that was all kept alive by Feinberg. Got in there and mixed it up with the big guys. Wallace. On Yenso inside, and Ugo connecting. Boy, he's got a lot of potential, oh, doesn't he? Oh, my goodness, he has such an upside. He's got 15 blocks in 79 minutes. Yeah, that's that pretty good. That translates to seven and a half per 40 minutes played. Put him on the floor, Coach. Yes. I think he's searching for different ways to play it more. Jarvis gets his own miss. Back up and in. He's been impressive early. Now with eight. Yeah, he's fun to watch. Got great footwork. And an offensive foul. Cats at home, up early. First, it's Wheeler, the left-handed guy, getting all the way to the rim. And then on the leak out, Chris Livingston. Cats up at home. We lead for the Cats halfway through our first half. Back in rough. Glad you could join us. Mark Wise, Roy Philpott. Good start for Oscar Shibwe, and he's healthy. And now back in that starting lineup for a couple of weeks. Things starting to look right there. Do you know how unique it is to cover a guy who can rebound the way he does on both ends of the floor? Because in this conference, he gets more defensive rebounds per game and more offensive rebounds per game than anybody else. And then he's so much improved in terms of his offensive repertoire and his range 
and how he can score in different ways. He's gotten pretty good even at facing the basket with a mid-range jumper. You know, amazing to watch him an hour before tip-off. Signing autographs. There was a line going up the stands here at Rupp. You see his numbers even going back to last season. So impressive. 15 boards per game. I mean, you and I were talking yesterday. In terms of rebounding, he's the greatest rebounder this league has seen in the SEC in about 25 years. you right. got to go back to Shaquille O'Neal at LSU, right. early 90s, and what he was able to do. I and mean, obviously led the country in that department a year ago, right back there this season. But I think that's a conversation you and I can have maybe later today about where he fits in all time in the conference, because it's up there, right? And here's the other thing, Roy. If I go in any part of Lexington or surrounding Fayette County, and you ask, what do you think about Oscar? You don't have to define who you're talking about. Everybody here knows who you're referring. Certainly. It's like the one word stars like Cher, yes. Madonna, Shaq, whomever. Oscar. Oscar. Four for Pulakitas after the mid-range was there. Frederick, no. And the rebound claimed by Jarvis. So he's got eight points, four points. All he's in a great battle with Sheba. And a foul call will put Feinberg at the strike. Frederick picks up his first. Feinberg, two for two at the line this year. Going to slice into that Kentucky advantage. A oh, busy afternoon of college basketball across the SPA networks in terms of SEC teams. As soon as we're done here, Ole Miss and Valpo live from the Pavilion in Oxford. And also coming up next weekend, triple header on the women's side, Sanford Auburn. We'll kickstart that one. And Mizzou will conclude things on December 18th. Wow, what a difference a year makes for Mizzou and the way that they play. On the men's side? On the men's side. Nine and oh right now. Nine and oh, one remaining undefeated teams in the country. As a matter of fact, the league has three of them with Auburn and Mississippi State as well. But Missouri with a complete makeover on the offensive end. Wheeler checks back in. High off the glass, no. Jarvis is fifth board. Kansas at Missouri later tonight on ESPN. That's at 515. That'll be a good game. I'm interested just to see what that looks like at right. the end, right? Missouri plays possession game. You don't have to worry about them keeping it in the 50s or 60s any longer. Yeah, different story. The coaching change. To go back to the Cats. Take another look at the scrum. Jarvis tries to create. Wheeler cause, causes the disruption, and then the ball kind of Pinballs around different people's ankles. Watch this. The ricochets. One, two, three, four. Now, Yale, a bit unfortunate there. The personal called on Jarvis. That's his second. He'll take the team high eight points to the bench with him. Give you another flavor of what's coming up. How about Arkansas, Oklahoma? That game over on ESPN2. That's got some juice. This game being played in Tulsa. Good to see Nick Smith back out on the floor for Very good. Arkansas, one of the dynamite freshmen, not only in this league, but in the entire country. And so they've had to kind of retool their minutes and their uh, rotations, if you will. And I think I want to make this point, Roy. This is, I don't know, this is my 10th or 11th game. Everybody's got six, seven, eight new faces. And everybody agrees, yes, it takes time. It just shouldn't take my team time. Gotcha. I was wondering where you're going with that. We understand. Fans can certainly agree with that commentary. Not going to take my team all this time. <laughs> 13 on the shot clock. Yeah, Danny Wolf in the game again. James Jones has been to go deeper into his bench because Matt Noling is not playing today. Their leading scorer. Wolf, the seven footer, giving you a little size. A little beef down low. Quick trigger, the three-pointer is there. That one rolls in from Malloy. Yeah, he hasn't shot for a high percentage, but he does shoot a lot of threes. That's his 29th attempt on the year. Eight-nothing run by Yale to get back in it. 
Kentucky with some loose possessions, and that's kind of been the mantra of this se team so far this season. Loose as in turnovers, loose shot as in selection. not good shots. Shot okay. Selection. Livingston says, take that, coach. Defender went under the screen. Livingston did the right thing. Wheeler nearly forced the turnover. Collected by Garham quickly. Kelly saves it. Under 10 on the shot clock. Here's Malloy. 16 footer, oh, yes. Feeling it. What a lift off the bench. He's got seven already. Only average is a little more than four a game. Well, you lose your leading scorer for this game. You got to make up that production from someplace. Opportunities. We asked James Jones, okay, who's the most likely candidate? He didn't have an answer. He's like, we all got to step up. Well, Wallace trying, lost the handle. Trying to do too much off the bounce. Garham picks it back up, no. It'll stay with Yale. Well, the visitors got off to a tough start. But thanks to Jack, Jack Malloy knocking down this three ball, followed it up with a little mid-range jumper. All of a sudden, Yale being the hangaround team. Kentucky 28-23, Mark Wise, Roy Philpott. There on the Yale bench is one Isaiah Kelly got the start today, the senior out of Augusta, Georgia. And would you know, he's a pottery maker, 22 years old, started back in 2016, and he calls himself a ceramic artist. And Mark, I'm no expert here, but maybe could go work for and design pottery for Simon Pierce up in the Northeast, or perhaps West Elm Pottery Barn, I don't know, but Man, he's tremendous, right, as an artist. Seems to me like that is a wonderful skill. Got the strong hands working for him. You put the pottery in the kiln, everything comes together nicely. Pottery in the what? The kiln, right? Is that what it is? I think you heat it up. Yeah. We'll be here all afternoon talking about pottery. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good game. Yale on a bit of a run. Connected on four of its last five field goals. You know, they tried to run the elevator play for Malloy, but Topping got through it. Shot clock down to six. Mbang will feed the post. And Kelly lost the handle. Three to shoot. Obviously, you never took any of that pottery ceramic classes back in high school or college. Here's the lob over, the quick hands, and help by Shibwe. Malloy's got to hurry. Air ball and a shot clock violation. It was 25 to 13 with 10.50 to go. Since then, Yale has worked its way back in it. I'm not sure pottery was offered at Scott County High School. Well, the amazing thing about that video montage there, those images, one knows if you actually go and try to attempt to make pottery and if you work at it for several years, you don't get anything that looks like what he's able to produce. <laughs> it's very difficult. I'll keep everything perfectly symmetrical, symmetry, whatever the word is I'm looking for, symmetrical. Reeves step back. No symmetry, symmetry on that three. Cats get it back. But did you see Wallace be a ball seeker? Just win the 50-50 ball on the long rebound. So here's Wallace at the point now, so he can be interchangeable with Wheeler. Yeah. Shot clock down to two. Wheeler the step back. Shot was blocked. Ahead to Imbe for the easy bucket. 28-25. Now you can't blame Wheeler on that one. That's a good shot clock awareness. Better defense by the visitors. Shibwe back to work. And was fouled. Late in the clock. Wheeler recognizes it, knows he has to get it up. Malloy extends and blocks, and how about the quick outlet by Kelly, the pottery maker? He just picked up his second foul. One of the things Cal talked to me about yesterday in terms of his team needing to get better was building on leads. They have not done that here in the first half. Top it. In and out. Well, I thought that was going to drop in bang clears. That looked like one of your shots at the carnival. 
Wolf left open, top of the key. Wheeler the rebound. Five to play in the first. And smacked out by Mahoney. Take another look. How many different parts of the rim can your attempt hit and not go in? The kind roll, and then it looks like it's going to trinkle in, and then it just rolls off. I'm telling you, carnival rims. Yes. Those, those are the bounces you get at a carnival. Kelly, the two fouls, checks out. And Malloy back on the floor. Exactly five to go in the first. Jason Wallace nearly stepped out. There was some contact, no whistle. Now a traveling violation. Five turnovers for the Cats. Just a little impatient on the offensive end. Guys trying to create too much off the bounce. I don't mind that, but give ball reversal first. Move the defense. And Wallace forced the turnover. It's a great example of Mbang dribbling, but not going anywhere. Quick hands of Wallace. First of all, Mbang just kind of bounces it off his knee. Rule of thumb for you young players, if you're going to dribble, go somewhere. Cats without a point in the last three minutes. Wallace lost the handle for a moment. Mbang wanting revenge. Reeves was fouled. Now, I thought that was an obvious call. Pulakitas was reaching in on the drive. He had gap responsibilities. Kentucky in the bonus, one and one coming for Reeves. Reeves will get the bonus. Ole Miss Valpo will follow this game here in Lexington. Live from Oxford, 3 o'clock Eastern, right here on SEC Network, also on the app. Look forward to Kermit Davis's club getting back at it. One of two for Reeves. And the rebound cleared by Yale. Rebels off to a 6-2 and two start. Embang the push off. Kentucky picking up the defensive intensity on this possession. Nine to shoot. Pulakitas against Toppin. Shibway the rebound. Numbers. Back to Wallace. Toppin, how about that board? Crowd appreciates the effort of numeral zero. Shot clock at eight. Toppin's got to fire one up. I don't know why the shot clock buzzer went off there. It's an interesting rotation for Kentucky because they have all new guys on the perimeter. The two freshmen and Reeves. Mahoney against Livingston. Now on Shibwe. Open look for Malloy. Shibwe the rebound. That'll be his sixth. Pretty impressive that Shibwe can guard out on the floor and yet get back in and be an impactful rebounder. Just so slow and developing right now. Livingston stop and pop in and out. Now the lid on the rim on this end of the floor. Malloy steps into one. Here comes Reeves. Living Cinefall had his steam, hit the deck hard. It'll stay with the Cats when we come back. Twenty nine, twenty five, two, twenty three remaining. And a physical 
Attempted finish by Livingston. Both players appear to be okay. And thank you very much. That's royalty, brother. Yes, it is. <laughs> Indeed. Four point game. Good game so far in Lexington and Kentucky. About a field goal in the last five and a half minutes. What stands out to you so far? I, I think the, they're kind of in offensive quicksand and it kind of builds. And what I mean by that is. You, you go down and you have a bad trip or you take a bad shot, and the next time down, you don't need the same thing. You, you need better execution. That's one of the things Cal talked to me about yesterday in terms of building. You build a lead or you build on a lead with better execution than what got you the lead in the first place. He didn't talk to me about that this morning at shoot around, <laughs> but he was optimistic. He thought this team would play well. They'll feed the big fella inside. Sheebway, no. Toppin, no. Wallace racing for it. And he'll claim the rebound finally. Wheeler off the mark. Mbang has it for Yale. Well, I am impressed with Yale's ability to keep Oscar off the offensive glass. They are putting a body on him every time. Chance for the Bulldogs to make it a one possession game. Eight and two on the season. Third game of a six game road trip for the team from the Ivy. Shot clock at five. Mbang operating. Mbang no. Rebound cleared by Shibwe, his seventh. Wheeler off and running. Shibwe gets it back and puts it in. Shibwe with six. Eight boards as well. That's the other thing. Shibwe runs the floor so well for a guy his size. National player of the year of season ago, returning to Lexington. Remember that news breaking off season, how big of a deal it was. Wheeler, great pass for Wallace up and in and a chance for three. Back to back possessions where Shibwe has been impactful. Here's the run out, the finish by Wheeler as he gets clipped along the way. But it was Shibwe's ability to get the rebound on each of the last two possessions, which led to good things in transition. And it's a little too bad because Yale had worked so hard at getting the fight back in the middle of the ring. Now trailing by eight, Wheeler leads the SEC in assists over seven per game on the receiving in that time. Missed the free throw. Under a minute to go in the first half. Two for one opportunity. Say it louder for the coaches in the back watching today. <laughs> Been banging that drum for a couple of years. Nearly a steal by Wallace. Mahoney up and in. The floater is good. Tough shot taker, tough shot maker. Man, I love the early post up by Oscar. And an offensive foul called on Wheeler. Dip the shoulder down, picks up the personal is first. Just the 14 foul against Kentucky. One more look. Now these are the hard calls. That time I think it's the right call because his feet was facing the offensive player. That makes him in legal guarding position. Big possession at the end of the half. Shot clock is off. Kentucky with fouls to give if they so choose. Out of their motion set, Mbang. Keeps the handle. Wolf launching. And off the mark from the seven footer. Kentucky leading Yale at the break. 33 to 27. 20 minutes in here in the Commonwealth. Great crowd on hand here today. And Kentucky in search of win number seven on the young season. Santa Claus is in town as well. What's not to love as we lead into the Christmas break? Say hello to Alyssa and company. Now back inside Rupp Arena, start of our second half. Kentucky, number 16 in the land, leading Yale by six. Sevier Wheeler being honored at halftime after he scored points number 1,000 across the pond in London. Mark Wise, Roy Philpott, uh, Taylor Cook, the owner, founder of Taylor Bell's Ice Cream, joined us. So happy she gave us some of this uh, Big Blue Madness ice cream, which is just phenomenal. It is phenomenal. It might be phenomenal, but it's not as good as this banana. What do you call it? 
Banana Bell, man. Banana Bell. Righteous. Yeah. They've got the kiosk here, Rupp Arena. We've enjoyed the ice cream today. And thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thanks. It's awesome. Awesome start to this basketball game as well. Yale's been competitive up to this point, right? Yeah, I think the thing that has surprised me the most when you look at the numbers of the first half is their rebound margin. Just minus two. They've more than held their own with the Big Blue home team. Big Blue Nation back from London. Big Blue Santa Claus is in the house tonight. You see Kaysen Wallace with those eight early points of four boards. And then Jack Malloy's done a nice job coming off the bench. Again, Yale without its leading scorer today, the biceps injury. I thought both teams got a little kick off their bench. Malloy for Yale, and then Chris Livingston had seven for Kentucky in the first half. But, again, it, 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 is it the wear and tear of the Oscar impact that will play out over the course of this second half? That ice cream threw you for a loop right even, there. I don't even want to put it down. You you can't keep eating the ice cream as we call the game. Really? No, you one cannot. Last, one last bite. Man, that's good. <laughs> Yale basketball to start our second half. Glad you could join us today. Big afternoon of college basketball in the SEC. We told you about Alabama Houston. Game over on ESPN2 as we speak between Arkansas and Oklahoma. A rebound claimed by Isaiah Kelly. There is a great battle between Shibwe and Jarvis. So Jarvis had those two fouls in the first half, sat on the bench in the last couple of minutes. Back on the floor to start the second. Pulakitas around the screen and a foul called against Reeves. Yeah, Reeves is trying to knife the ball screen. We talk about this action that Yale likes to run. Likes to run. There's a backdoor element followed by a DHO. Something that Kentucky worked on yesterday, trying to knife through that screen. Did have a fun conversation with Antonio Reeves this morning, talking about when he committed to Kentucky. Of course, he's the leading scorer for the team so far this year. Three-point shooting's been phenomenal, second in the SEC in that department. Quick trigger, to Mahoney, and that's a three. A one-possession game. 33-30. to 30. Well, Yale, 3 of 12 from deep, but squarely in the mix to start our second half. You know, some guys you just cannot go under. Take another look here earlier. Under the ball screen, on the rotation. Well, this is the foul play that Reeves got called on earlier. But then he was the one that went under the screen which led to the three-point shot. They stopped play for a moment to release the net, which got tangled up on the rim. The Yale side. Topping with five to shoot. Poked away by Inbang and a steal. Mahoney the pump fake for the tie, and Yale. Here come the Bulldogs. That was Pulakitas. That is such good stuff in transition. The visitors after the steal. It's the quick pass ahead. The drive. Here's the pass ahead. Then the drive. But it's all set up for the kick out. In our second half, two quick threes by Yale in a brand new ball game. We're tied for the fourth time today. And Mbang creating the steal and the turnover that led us to this point, Mark. So many open threes are from the same side of the floor that the ball was penetrated from. That's a great kick out. Mahoney knocks down yet another three ball. He is now over 50% from bonus land on the year. Are you pressing any kind of panic button? Are you concerned no. at this point? A lot of basketball left. A lot of basketball. Try to win a four minute segment. But the guys in blue, the visitors today, they've got some confidence now. And they're doing it impressively for James Jones without their leading scorer, Matt Nolan. We asked Coach Jones, or I asked him earlier today, uh, do you look at the schedule, you kind of circle this game on it as you Get ready to play in front of almost 20,000 fans. And he said, no, we don't. You know, we played some tough teams this year. We recognize that this will help us get ready for you know, some of the bigger environments we'll play in this season. But it gets us ready for the league and gets us ready for the rest of our year. 
two-man game in and out the three. That was Collins off the mark. Shibway tried to save it, and the bounce pass out of bounds. Yeah, I'd rather see Collins run through there after feeding inside. He hasn't knocked down a three ball all year. I watched him some in, in practice yesterday. His shot looks fine. He just hasn't found a lot of success. And Bing trying to spot Jarvis and the bump from behind called against Kentucky. Yeah, I think Shibway got caught because he was standing up. There was a block to block screen. He was late to see it. Well, you've got this game sandwiched in between the trip to London, the win over Michigan, UCLA next week in the Big Apple. You got exams coming up two minutes into our second half and a breather for Sheepway. That means Sheepway and Toppin now both on the bench. And a hard foul. That will go against Yale. Kelly came down hard. That's his third personal. He moves just a little, but there's such a vicious contact. Did you agree with that call? I'm going to put you on the spot no, there. No, because I think 50-50 calls the 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 uh, the benefit of the doubt has to go to the offense on those plays, in my view. Cats back to work in search of their first points here in the second half, and that was Collins with a forearm. His second. What you have to get careful of, I think, is just because players run into each other. Now, that's an illegal screen. There's no question. Shibwe quickly back on the floor. A minute or two for Onyenso. He's back on the bench. Downstairs to Jarvis. Yale looking for its first lead. Backdoor cut, and they have it. Bulakitas wide open. An 8 nothing burst by the Bulldogs to claim the advantage for the first time. And Kentucky responds. Nice inside position by Shibway that time. It's where he catches it that matters. Oscar with eight and eight. Tied at 35, and this crowd getting a little restless. Stolen. Top it. Back to the dribbling too much without going anywhere. Wallace had eight early points, nothing since the 15 minute mark, the first half. Reeves, the dump off, Sheepway, and a chance for three. Pretty obvious to me coming out of the locker room, the message was get the ball to the big fella. Their first two or three trips, they had not much success, but here in back to back possessions, Shibway knows what to do with it down in that high rent district. The free throw shooter this season at 81%. His first of the afternoon coming right now. I mean, it goes without saying a double double machine. Two boards away from that. Oh, here's Kentucky going down the floor. Trying to change the momentum of this second half, right? Yeah, trying to change where the geography of the game is being played. Malloy to Jarvis, rejected by Shibwe. Ahead to Wallace. Big man. Give him 13. And a timeout called by James Jones. He's seen it up. We talk about how many different ways can Oscar impact the game. Here's the defensive side and running the floor. Here's the offensive side. In fact, ways Kentucky had gone down the floor. That put the ball in Malloy's hands to beat the press. As he comes up the floor, the outlet pass is there, but it's a little high for Jarvis. That allows Shibwe to impact with the block. And the fellow on the other end runs the floor, has both feet down in that restricted area arc. And Shibwe delivers, but he's getting it done, as he does so many times 
on both ends of the floor. A 7 nothing run by Oscar Shibwe himself after Yale had grabbed the lead for the first five to 33. Those seven points mark coming in just 56 seconds. Kentucky. And you know what that run by Yale did to take the lead? It woke up this crowd. Yes, it did. And then Oscar said, come on. Hop on my back, we got this. He's got 13 and nine. And the timeout called by Yale. All right, so if you're James Jones, you're in this game. You got 16 minutes to go. You're down by five. You've mentioned several times without your leading score. Yeah. They haven't been great from three-point range, but Jarvis has been pretty good, right? Yeah, and I think don't get caught up in the emotion of the moment, the emotion of the crowd. Don't get up, don't get caught up in a faster tempo just because Kentucky's going down the floor. See, I could never be a coach or a player because I'm too emotional. I would get <laughs> caught up in all of that. I would check every box there. Big possession for the Bulldogs suddenly. Defending champions of the Ivy League. Here's this high post action again. It's the combination of backdoor and dribble handoffs. And Bay there's a three, and it's good. Well, I get it. Embang's not really known as a three-point shooter, just 19% on the year. But you cannot get caught on the ball screen and give a guy all kinds of time. A one-possession game here. And now Sheepway mid-range. There it is. He scored the last nine for Big Blue. Yeah, I'd be tempted right now to out. If anybody shoots before the big fella gets a touch, guess where you're coming? Nice little warm seat on the bench. <laughs> a steal. The head to Wheeler. Now you got to wait for him to get position. Now give it to him. Yep. It's over. 11 unanswered by Oscar Shibwe. Well, he had the three by Embang, but he scored the last 11 straight for Kentucky. Lead back to six. Embang thought about it. And now Jarvis. Shot clock down to five. Embang a heat check. Jarvis on a putback. Yeah, Shibwe had to go challenge the shot. That's when other Kentucky players have to rebound. Inside out, there's Wheeler. Jarvis the rebound. But I'm okay with that shot because it was an inside out look. The right guy got the touch and he made the right play. the fake and the spin. Contact, no whistle. Shibwe wants it. He'll get it off the rebound. And a quick whistle and a foul call. We talk so often about Shibwe's ability to rebound. How about hands? And then watch coming right at you, runs the floor and gets rewarded. Toppin makes the right read and the right play. Shibwe left-handed off the glass, and then he had to come out on the three-point attempt, and that left Jarvis with an opportunity to go to the offensive glass. And all of a sudden, our tempo has really picked up. They're going to say Shibwe was in the act of shooting. He scored the last 11 straight for the Cats, make it 12. Now 18 points and 10 rebounds, another double-double, his 33rd of his Kentucky career in just 41 games. That's pretty good. That's special. Yeah, that's special. That dude is special. Goes without saying. You start to run out of superlatives, adjectives, awards. First miss at the line. Mahoney finally claims the lead is five. Foul called again. 
James Frederick. You know, we spoke with James Jones this morning, and he gave us the idea, the notion that they would not be intimidated, they would not back down right. in this environment. And I think that's what we've seen. Now, all that postseason success and appearances that they've had in the last seven years, pretty impressive. 74 wins in Ivy competition over the course of those seven seasons. Four titles, four league championships. Fade away, no. Filipinas off the mark. Great challenge. See, I'd rather see Wheeler flare out. I know he scores there, but it was only after he slowed himself down. Flare out and get the ball to the big guy first. Lead back to seven. Wheeler now with Garm off the bounce, the floater, there was contact, and he'll shoot two. I thought for a minute Wheeler was going to force this issue, but he did back it out. So he had a little bit of maturity about that possession. Was able to finish on the other side. Kind of an awkward shot for a left-hander. Third foul on Frederick. Garham at the stripe. He's four for eight at the line this season. Five of nine. Don't forget Ole Miss Valpo coming up as soon as we're done in Lexington. Pavilion should be rocking. Ole Miss off to a six and two start. Three o'clock Eastern right here on SEC Network also on the app. I'm anxious to see Ole Miss. I, I will be there uh, opening night of league play. Tennessee's in town. Tennessee's in town. Should be a good one. See, I like that much better. Flare out and allow Oscar to post. Reeves. Shibwe, and an offensive foul called on 34, his second. But Oscar knew it right away, and so did Cal. Neither complained. Take another look. Reeves, who has been so good. And there, there was an obvious foul. You know, pushing the back there. <laughs> Look at Oscar. <laughs> Lead at six. Garm nearly turned it over. Trying to post. They have a mismatch with Kelly. Malloy from 16. And stop and pop. 47 43. He has been dynamite in the mid range. He's got nine, approaching 12 to play here in the second half. Doesn't it seem like Yale's kind of now absorbed the run of Kentucky? I was just going to say, they're not going away. Toppin attacking, gets the bounce. First points for Jacob Toppin. He had several of those moves in the win against Michigan where he can knife his way, angle his way all the way to the rim. It's a four-point lead for the Cats, now ranked 16th in the country. Jarvis against Sheepway. Garm with a bounce pass. Malloy wrestled down, and he'll shoot two. Jacob Toppin has been kind of quiet today, but here in this last possession, watch the extension and the finish and the flip off the window. We've got a in Lexington. Here between Yale and Kentucky, a six point lead for Big Blue. You heard about Nick Smith. Got 14 points. Good to see him healthy for the Hogs. That game being played in Tulsa. Yeah, Orange Short came over and told me they went and reviewed a play, but they were they ruled it as a play on. It is a great day. I know you were going through some of the games there. Um, it's a great day for hoops in this conference. How about LSU Wake Forest, That's a game a we haven't game. talked about? Great game. Auburn Memphis later today, 5 o'clock on ESPN2. Tigers ranked 11th in the land. A lot of resume opportunities for the SEC today. Malloy at the stripe. Shibway another double-double. He's already with 18 and 11. And Malloy with a chance to set a new career high with a couple of makes.
and 10 earlier this season now has tied that mark. And he has been the answer without the services of Matt Noling today for James Jones. New career high with 11 for Jack Malloy, the sophomore. You know, Malloy was averaging just under seven minutes a game last year. Now he's under 13. So you know, he, he's being asked to do almost twice as much as he was a year ago. And today here in Rupp, he's delivered. High ball screen for Wheeler. Reeves has been held in check for the most part. Livingston will feed Oscar. Double team, triple team for a moment. Does not matter. He's got 20. I just love the way he surveyed, took his time. Under a screen with Malloy, the way he's shooting it. There's the back cut, and here's the dribble handoff. That combination. Garm inside to Kelly, who was fouled. Second half, the emphasis, get the ball to Oscar. Even Livingston gets it to him in the right spot. Look at him survey, though. See his eyes look around? He doesn't see the double team coming from the baseline, so he reverses and goes that way to get the easy deuce. But that is a seasoned veteran play there by Oscar Shibway. Yale already in the bonus. Oscar Shibway has 14 of Kentucky's 18 points so far in the second half. And that's not common, right, to be that patient for a big man. Oh, not at all. Especially because you're in that three-second area, and even though we see three seconds called maybe once every 19, you're always cognizant of it. First points for Kelly. Now has two as he rolls that second free throw win. Malloy checks out for a breather. Pulakita's back on the floor for Yale. Second all-time meeting between these two. The first time came in Lexington in 1961. You were not on the call for that game, correct? <laughs> I was not. <laughs> but one of the guys, I grew up here. I was born here, so Cotton Nash. One of my early Kentucky favorites, I think, went for 16 and 16 in that game. Now, Roy, if I'm Cal, here's what makes me nervous. It's just a four-point game as we enter the last quarter, if you will, of this game. And with Yale's ability to make threes, this is in a danger zone, I think, for Kentucky. And Yale's only 5 of 15 from downtown so far. Shibwe feeling it. That continues. He's got 22. Every draft board I've looked at for the last month have him somewhere in the second round. You can't tell me there's not a spot for him on somebody's team. I mean, one of the top rebounders in SEC history. Showing the outside shot. How about the spin? That nearly fell. Instead, Kentucky comes away with it. Here's Wheeler. And a kickball. This is where Wheeler can be so disruptive at times. He's not going to be a defensive rebounder, but he can be disruptive in other ways. Watch after this rebound on the weak side by Kelly. There's Wheeler who just gets back in there and creates the turnover. An agitator of sorts. Yes. Bounce pass to top and reclaimed by Shibwe. Tend to shoot plenty of time. Wheeler, floater, counting with a teardrop. He's got eight. Well, remember the tough shots he made late in the game in the win against Michigan. Big time. Cats by eight, approaching nine to play. Another mismatch inside, but Kentucky switched out of it. Garum, the Euro step, gets it back. Tried the no-look dish to Jarvis, tapped out. It'll stay with Yale. Take another look. I think Shibwe deflects the ball again. Yes, he did. Oscar 
for Shibwe has tied his season high now with 22. Career high is 30. That was set last year. Very efficient as well. 10 of 14 from the floor. Jarvis in and out. Here comes Reeves. One on two. And he'll shoot a pair of free throws. Good attack by Reeves. Take another look. A little stutter step. Goes to his right. Almost invites the contact. Gets himself to the free throw line. Antonio Reeves, 79% at the line. Forget about our women's basketball triple header headed your way. Coming up on Sunday, the 18th, Sanford Auburn, SMU, Texas A&M. Missouri and Illinois will conclude it all. A nice three pack of games right here on SEC Network. Also on the ESPN app. A couple of free throws for Reeves. He now has eight. Here's what I wanted to ask you also as it relates to Shibway. Does he ever get tired? Never. I mean, his motor, he has such a great motor. That's a three by Feinberg. And that's a breakdown on the Gretzky dribble, if you will, behind the backboard. You must cover opposite corner. Livingston short, in-bang clears. Another big possession for Yale. Backdoor cut, Feinberg was hammered. He hit the deck hard, free throws coming for 13 in dark blue. On the wraparound, it's the backdoor action. That's a nice find for the big seven-footer that time, Wolf was very, very patient, and Feinberg goes back to the free throw line. Feinberg at the line. Four points this afternoon for Michael Feinberg. His brother Robbie played basketball at Harvard. Just his third and fourth free throw attempts of the season coming up. And he'll get one more. Wheeler back on. Livingston checks out. Oh, two. Wolf with a rebound and a monster board in traffic. We got loud in here for those two free throws. All of a sudden. This is too slow in developing. Shot clock down to two. Inbang has to hurry. Lost the hand on the way up. And a shot clock violation. 22 points, 11 rebounds for Oscar Shibwe. Another double-double. Where does he rank all time in the history of great rebounders in the SEC? We'll examine that. And Oscar Shibwe, coach, he's right there. 15 per game last year. National Player of the Year, and of course he's back. Where do you rate him amongst the all-time greats in the conference? Wow, that's a great question. He's certainly the best rebounder I have seen um, outside of Shaq in the last 20 years. I mean, clearly it starts there. That's easy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, Bernard King, I don't even know if I would have thought about that. Unbelievable numbers. 14 and a half rebounds a game for a guy that was six, six, six foot six. Think of him as a scorer. He could fill it yeah. up, right? Yeah. Great trip down memory lane with that montage. Back to live action. Kentucky with just a seven-point lead, but possession. Six-point game at halftime. Yale battle back. Grab the lead here in the second half. Cats have made four of their last five from the floor. The little things that matter. There was a bad pass which disrupted this whole flow. Top and connects. He's got four. He has not played well today, but he has redefined what a bad game is for him, meaning he's on the floor late as Wallace gets beat back door. Mahoney, the layup, 59-52. Just will not go away. Wheeler, 
Ojibwe, triple team, gets it back, triple team, does not matter again, 24, <laughs> and the flex. I thought he got fouled about five different times. I think that was his polite way of suggesting that to this veteran officiating crew. Both arms extended, flexing there, running back down the court. Malloy gets it to Wolf. Seven-footer against Shibwe. Little dream shake. No. It's a good defensive sequence by the Cavs. Wheeler attacking Reeves. Pops out to Wallace. Shibwe with position. Drew the double team. Wheeler open for a moment. Lays it up and in. Good things happen when Oscar touches the ball inside. 63-52. Finally, a little bit of breathing room. For number 16, Kentucky. Shot clock down to five. Malloy, fade away three and an air ball. We talked about Oscar impacting the game. We know he can impact the game on the offensive end. Here he is. Again, he catches too far down. I thought he got fouled three or four different times and still manages to finish inside. Take another look. That's a foul. And there's a foul. Nonetheless, it's a heavy deuce. What do you want to see if you're an NBA scout that would lead you to believe, okay, no, he's not a second-round guy coming up next year. He's a first-round pick. Well, he has extended his range to 17, 18 feet, and he's done it comfortably. I don't know if he can move out further or not. So the extension of that range, 26 on the board, four off of his career high, and now Kentucky with its largest lead. Smart play by Toppin, who did not take a bad two in the paint. Took his time and found his big guy. Goes back to that patience word you were talking about. Plakitas forced that one up. Toppin clears. Well, it has not been easy today for Kentucky. And on the verge, perhaps, of win number four in a row. These are the kind of late game execution details that Cal was talking about yesterday. Extending leads. Extending leads. Having quality possession. Hand off to Reeves. Stop and pop. Silky smooth. He's now in double figures. But see, Roy, the difference in that shot off the bounce, it came out of the flow of the offense. It wasn't one guy just trying to create his own look. We talked to Reeves this morning. I asked him the question, transferring in from Illinois State. Malloy splashes home that three. I said, were you nervous the first time you talked with Cal? Were you nervous at all? <laughs> and he goes, honestly, I was. It was a dream come true. You know, he had DePaul and Oregon, some other teams coming after him in the transfer portal. A little different when Kentucky comes calling. Shibwe pops out to Embang, contact, and a blocking foul called on Shibwe, his third. I would be nervous, too. Look down the cell phone. John Calipari on the horn. I'm with you. Thank you very much. Back here in Rupp, 67.55, 3.29 to go. As we take a look at our All-State Mayhem moment. Well, Oscar wears 34, but the action was 94, as in impacting the game from one end of the floor defensively to the offensive finish on the other end of the floor. So I'm seeing our mayhem moment, 34 and 94. I like that. You did good with that. You've been sitting on that one all game. Yes, it came to my mind about 19 seconds. <laughs> Shibway with 26 and 11. 20 of those 26 coming in the second half and coming right after Yale had built its first lead, 35-33. But I thought Kentucky started the second half. You know, coaches have to go through a process with their team. Not all shots are created equal. And you need to do what you do best. And right now, for this Kentucky team, 
I think Cal would tell you they have to play through Oscar. You're getting better the deeper we get into this game, just like Coach Cal's team. <laughs> I mean, these last, these last you, 60 seconds have been phenomenal. Are you saying the first half I wasn't very good? It's, it's another story cream. for another day. It's the ice cream. You've got to look at the negative. <laughs> the banana, coach. The banana ice cream. One more coming for Embank. Yale was picked third in the Ivy this year. I mean, just a couple of votes behind the top two teams. This game has had the feel of that first round game yep. you see somewhere in Utah and everybody's just trying to wake up to get started. That Yale's going to be a tough out for any team this season. The one thing that if I'm James Jones I'm coming away with is Jack Malloy and his potential moving forward. You get Noling back who's almost 17 points a game and now maybe Malloy's going to become an 8 to 10 point scorer. Uh, he'll be in the mix. Again, good commentary on your part. I'm with you. Shot clock down to 5. Toppin. Beat Shibway. Shibway the reverse. So Oscar Shibway with 28, just two off, tying his career high. I actually think Cal may have told him, if you shoot before Oscar touches it, you're coming out. I mean, he has been so dominant in this second half. Yale turns it over. But you also have to have a teammates that understand this. And again, topping with the feed there. Six-point game at halftime. Yo, led by two. It was two minutes into our second half. Kentucky has settled things down nicely. 12-point advantage. Wheeler gets it back. And here's Shibwe. He's got to fire that, doesn't he? Got to let a three go. Wheeler high off the glass. No, in bang the rebound. I, that thought was in my mind there. <laughs> yes, I wanted him to shoot it. Mahoney the runner. Hopping. Strong rebound in traffic. Yale's ability to hang with Kentucky on the boards has really been impressive. Kansas, Missouri tonight. Yeah. Can Mizzou make that game interesting second half at home? If they can make the game between the top of the key and the top of the key. Turnovers, tempo, chaos. making three-point shots. High ball screen, Wheeler. And a shot clock violation. 135 to go. Oscar saying I couldn't hear what was called. Sometimes we get too complicated, though. Dribble to the side that Oscar's on and let him post up. Feed him. <laughs> yes. Not rocket science. It's basketball. Sometimes we make it rocket science, right? I'm guilty of that. Impressive showing by Yale on the road. Just the second meeting all time between these two programs. Jarvis has looked good at times today. Too strong. Shibway the rebound. That'll be his 12th. Is he as good as anybody you've seen lately at tipping the ball to himself? Just thinking the exact same thing. Yes. And I mean, it's an art. Like, I, every single time he's in the area, if he can't grab a hold of it firmly, it's the light cap, and he's able to do it on the second or third carom as you take a look at Kentucky's upcoming slate. Yeah, big one next weekend. At least plays here before you know it. How about yeah. that? Mashley improved undefeated Missouri right now, we should say. Mississippi State remains undefeated in the conference. Back iron for Reeves. I think Sheway should have shot the three just to potentially get a new career high. Just because we want him to. Yeah, who are we? Timeout call, 43.7 seconds to go. Well, we always enjoy our trip here to God's country, right? <laughs> it's been a fun trip I to Lexington. I finally got you to say that on the air. I, I didn't realize you were born in Lexington. Good to know for future reference, but you lived here for a couple of years, and it is a uh, wonderful time of year. L let me talk about that for just a minute, because I, I think I get the fandom here. Because I was raised this way. I was born here. I get the big blue nation thing. Sure. 
but you've got to keep your expectations in some sort of a realistic way. Not and sense. winning it all is cannot be the, the ultimate. You, you can never overachieve. I'll put it to you this way. Kentucky has won four NCAA tournaments since 1958. Four. That's one every 16 years. Fans don't want to hear that. <laughs> Cal wants to win one this season. <laughs> well, I get that. I mean, you want to win it every year. But give your real your expectations a chance for a team to overachieve. I'll put you on the spot. Can this team win it all this season? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defer, and I'm going to tell you why. Because you have to remember they went a month preseason without Oscar recovering uh, from the surgery. They missed some time with Wheeler. So this team, from a practice perspective, is behind schedule. And so I don't really – ask me that question a month from now, I'll have a better sense. I mean, typically the easy answer would be, well, the talent is here. This team has more experience, though, than some of Cal's other yes. teams recently. I, I think that matters, but you talked about it earlier, everybody finding their role. Yeah, it takes a while. There's just no fast-forward button. I know one thing that I really like, they shoot more threes, they make more threes. Everybody talks about their three-point percentage. Well, they shot a great percentage last year. They just didn't shoot a lot. Dunk by Jarvis. Well, he's impressive. 12 points tonight. Seven rebounds as well. A lot of that produ production coming in the first half. Shot clock is off. And what will amount to be a hard-earned win for Big Blue back in the States. And now a week off before traveling to Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena, to battle UCLA. And it was not easy, but outscoring Yale by four in the second half, 69-59. to 59 is the final. Well, it was a great battle because Yale held their own but at, on the glass, but at some point in time in the second half, Oscar said, I've had enough. 28 points for Sheepway. 12 rebounds. Another double-double. And that was exactly what the Cats needed in this second half. For Mark Wise, I'm Roy Philpott. Enjoy the rest of your college basketball Saturday. Send you now back to the studio, Alyssa Lang. Well, 69-59, the final score. Kentucky beats Yale. Mark Wise, Roy Philpott here with the star of the show, Oscar Chibwe. 28-12, but you played your best ball when you guys really needed that production trailing by two. What happened in the second half? Uh, in the second half, we went to the locker room. I told them, I said, they can call me. You got to throw me, feed me <laughs> the ball. And even uh, they come drop me, I'll kick it out and shoot it. And I'll fight for rebound. We actually figured it out. They can, so every time they threw inside it, they could not grab me. I just got to get some easy buckets. What excites you more about this team? Um, we, uh, we are together, and um, we just come here and have fun and play harder. Just, I love this team. We all got the same mission, so I'm excited. So you guys just came back from London. How was that trip for you and as a team? You guys obviously beat Michigan. That was the most important aspect. But you also got to see what life is like overseas again. Uh, it was great. Um, I love London. It was good. Um, the building was different. So uh, we had a good time. We enjoyed time. and We practiced. We had a good time. We played again. Like I say, it's the team you're going to fight the most. It's the team you're going to win. Coach Calapero always said that. Fight until the end. That's how it's going uh, to get us to another level because we don't quit. We're always fighting. Oscar, it looked like in the second half, you got to a point where you said, okay, this has gone on long enough. Absolutely, absolutely. I went in the locker room, I was screaming, threw me the ball, they can't guard me. And uh, come here, they threw me the ball. Even you see me uh, play some uh, double team because um, I knew uh, it was going to be tough for them if I start attacking them to the rim. All right, so you guys get a little bit of a break before heading to New York City. You get UCLA up in the world's most famous arena. What, what's next for this team, in your opinion, as you guys continue to grow and figure things um, out? We are, we are, like, I'm excited because we are getting now used to play together now. Uh, we're going to have, we have uh, this until this next Saturday. We're going to have a great time to work together to be prepared for UCLA. I'm very excited. That gym is my, one of the favorite gyms to play in. Congratulations. Thank I thought you. you were awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the time, Oscar Sheepway. Getting it done with 28 and 12. <laughs> 
I just always have a smile on my face every time I listen to Oscar Shibwe, <laughs> especially when he says multiple times, they couldn't guard me. Come on, just get me the ball. Check out this. Uh, Patrick, you alluded to this stat. First half points for Oscar, six. Second half, 22. You see the eight rebounds in the first, four off the glass in the second half. I mean, this is a guy that wants to take the game by the horns and control it, and he did today. Potentially your last year after how the season ended for them in the tournament, this is a man on the mission, and he's not a black hole. You saw when the double team came to him, he was able to get the ball out. To my man, Damian Fishback's point, Xavier Wheeler making some great decisions when he got